what's going on guys, it's your boy KRS, you guys got it up, I'm going to read boy, whatever you like to call me. Um, in their last video we were talking about who's going to go number one for the NBA, um, NBA draft. Um, I know that I should be close this for a, a, you know, an NBA 2K15, but I don't really give a crap because NBA 2 k I don't know. Um, but now let's go into detail about this. Um, in the last video we talked about if, if Aaron Harrison or Andrew Harrison would make a great fit for the Phoenix Suns. And I think that that's a very good fit. Um, because of the fact that Marcus Morris and Marquis Morris, they did good in college. And, you know, if it's something like Harry Harrison, they just can't do it. Does that mean that they can both pump in the league to be possible potential first, first and second picks? But, you know, here's the problem. You know, number one, Howard the Sun, they're only Number two, they could either trade him as number one, or number two, they try to get him. Yeah, four years, but, um, but then on top of that, it's just, it's just that, you know, technically it's such a, it's such a big, it's such a big discussion. But a lot of people don't really understand because, you know, when you get picked for the NBA, you have to understand that there's a lot of, there's a lot of talk when a lot of people go on their you know, about when you sign with a team, you're better with them for a couple of years, you know, once you sign off of them. For that first contract. But don't get me wrong, like, the Harrison case are very good, and they're very good But, you know, if the NBA were smart enough, or if Coke was smart enough to, to take them in, you know, as a late first round to draft them, and then try to do it like, you know, because, like, I don't know how well I'm seeing it in the sunset, and I can't, you know, I've heard some Harrison suit that sucks, you know, to that good of a. Uh, draft picking, you know, team, because, you know, they're just not, they're just not really committing to what they say they are, and, to be honest, like, I, I don't know, like, I can see it happening, but the Suns need to be smart about this, like, you can't, can't just, you can't just go for the number one draft pick, and just try to fight for that position to have a bad team this year, and then hope to, you know, go for it next year, I don't know, but, um, I just personally think that both of these groups, like both of these players, they have very good talent, and they, have, they know what they, they know what they want to go for. They want, like, I'm pretty sure Andrew, he can be a good possible first rounder, but Jalo and Carl Anthony Towns could be this, could be, could be up for this stuff. Now let's talk about them. Um. <coughs> But, um, the first one I'm going to talk about this is, uh, my boy Jalo. So let's see. In the tournament right now, he was averaging 23.8 points per game. And I think he's averaging almost a good 10 rebounds per game, but I might be wrong about that. Because, um, I just know for a fact that, uh, he's just really fucking right now. He's, he's having the, he's having the good highlight of the season. And he knows that he's gonna, he's only gonna get better. I don't know. But you know, I I will I will you know revert back to that conversation real quick after I found out, you know, in the power Anthony Downs real quick. But um let's just talk about this. Um he's a very good post playmaker, he knows how to really handle the ball very well. He he has a very good you know IQ basketball, basketball IQ, you know, you know, you know, it's coming over, We've lost control. kick it out to somebody that's wide open, but I think the weakness is to me that when well, he's on defense, he's not, he's not as quick as he really is, so, you know, I was thinking that when he's on defense, like a pass, but when I heard about this guy, uh, you know, I was really glad he was actually really good, he was really good this year, and I was very surprised that, that Justin Wentz on they all got, they all got signed up and signed up. Like, you know, that, that's another thing that I wanted to say for the chat. He's going to be a good one too. And let's talk, let's talk about another guy, which I will be back to him very quick. Uh, freaking my boy, 
see that happening I don't know I think that's going to be up for discussion too but you got to talk about this like the NBA doesn't want to have one team being overpowered than the other which I just think like if you saw that happening that would be a good that would be a good that would be a good match like that would be a good squad good squad good squad for the college basketball year good squad of the year Best basketball team you'll ever see here, something deadly. Team deathmatch. That'll just look freaking good on their resume. Like, you know, they all play together. And then if they all transition to see each other in the NBA, like, that's even a bigger deal. But, you know, I think, I think in college basketball minds, and, you know, 
I promise that I came back to this conversation. But I think the match that people really, really want to see is the dude and Kentucky. Because I was just watching Christian Lehner, and, um, you know, there was so much talk about how he was hated so much. For his, for his, you know, awesomeness, I guess. But, um, no, a lot of people hate him because he made that final shot, you know, against Kentucky. And then on top of that, he did it, he did the same thing with Michigan. And then on top of that, he did that against Connecticut. <laughs> so, you know, like, I guess, I guess you can say that Christian Leitner, he's the main reason why Kentucky and Duke do not like each other. But that's another discussion, too. But, um, you know, I just think that if we have this game happening, which we play Gonzaga in approximately six or six or seven or four, like eight hours, um, it, it's definitely going to be a tough game. I don't think Gonzaga wants to lose, and I don't think I want to lose today, too. Which, I just think that's just not, that's just not, that's just not something that we want to, you know, really do them. And say about it, let's be honest, like, Everybody hates Gonzaga. I don't like Gonzaga. You don't like Gonzaga. Maybe you do like Gonzaga. Maybe all of you guys like Gonzaga. It's who we But, nah, but... I don't know, man. Like, you know, Gonzaga, they're just a very fierce team. And, you know, like, as always, you just, you just don't finish. And when we get to the Elite Eight, that's, that's always your hardest game to play. And, and like the other guys are saying, like, you know, this is the biggest, toughest game in our lives. Like, you can't possibly think that we're gonna come out easily strong. It's gonna be a huge fight. It's gonna be like a wall. Right? You know, a lot of people don't have to understand that because, you know, as we as a youth program have gotten so much better every freaking year, we always tend to choke at the very final moments, you know, like, you know, throughout, throughout like, our basketball career. And, yeah, it's a great, it's a great thing that Notre Dame lost in Kentucky. That's one less thing to worry about, right? But, do you really think that we're going to come out of and strong against a big bag of team that claims to say that they're better? Which, they have, they have proof of it against UCLA the other night. But, <clears throat> you might do the reverse on them. Who knows? Enemy UAV That's why it's called Mark Madness, right? But, you know, I don't know, that's, that's just something to talk about, and to be honest, man, I don't think that we might come out with a win, because, let's be honest, Gonzaga, they're a three-point shooting team, they have, they have the bigs, they got, they got a freaking guy from Poland, well, he's like, um, Karnowski, but, you know, hey, we got a guy from, you know, Southside Chicago, he got a little open for him, but, you know, you, you can't stop him either. You can't stop them, so I think, you know, me as a youth fan, me having the pride of representing my pride and, you know, fan commitment for a great basketball program that has won four national titles against a team that has never made it to the freaking... Yeah. They, they've never made it to, to the freaking elite eight since, what, 1980-something? the heck out of here. Like, come on. You know, you guys may say that, but, you know, like, you know, saying it, saying it is a lot harder. No. Saying it is a lot easier. So, yeah, so, when we, when we go up against the other, we're gonna Friendly beat them, UAV but we're not gonna Incoming beat them enemy so easily. It's gonna be a well hard fought game, but, you know, let's go into the discussion about the game. And this is why I don't like them, because, I'll give you my reasoning for him. Uh, yeah, sorry. But, um... <clears throat> let's go on with the first one. Kyle Lynch. This kid, I don't like him. Well done, I don't respect him. Because he traded. He was a traitor against Kentucky. Because he knew that he wasn't going to make anything big out of there. But, he knew from a fact that if he had stayed there, with the Harrison Twins and Carl Anthony Towns and Willie Colin Stein and Archie Goodwin. Um, doesn't that add up to something? Like, let me ask you guys that. Doesn't that add up to something, right? You guys may not think like that, but 
You guys can say all the crap you want. You guys can say that Carl. Um, you guys can say that you know Kyle. He, he wasn't. He wasn't thinking that was his good enough school for him to, you know, have him have a good, you know, end of the season or you know, like end of his college career. But like, what is Gonzaga gonna do for you? Gonzaga is a team that has never really made it to tournaments like that, like that too often. Which I'm saying that in a, in a sense because Gonzaga is not that type of team to really cook that well. And let me let me tell you something. I have a lot of beef with Gonzaga. I don't like. I've never liked them ever since they claimed to say that they were going to have a very good, you know, like undefeated season. And you know, <clears throat> once um, you know, like ever since Kelly, like uh, Kelly Olenek, they like they try to. Claim to think that they were that good of a team, but then once you get too dang cocky, you're gonna get your butts whooped. So, you know, I think that personally, the way I see this game being analyzed, we as Duke, we might come out the victors because when you really think about it, Coach K, he's been through a lot, man. We've done so much to work hard and really put the team on our backs. To, to really say to ourselves, we're a good team, we're going to really dominate, you know, like we're going to dominate and we're going to have a great season. But, you know, I just personally think that, you know, Gonzaga may say the same thing, but, like, let's, let's, let's be honest, like, what does Gonzaga have done in their tournament, tournament resume? What type of teams have they gone up against? We've gone up, I think we've gone up against this company, but, I, but I think we've, lost against them, or we could have gotten like a win off win of them, but like, let's talk about them. Like, did you guys go up against Wisconsin? Did you guys go up against Notre Dame? Did you guys go up against North Carolina? No. And that's that's their problem. And right now, you know, I'm not liking this gun. I hate this gun right now. I don't really use machine guns in, in close quarters, which I'm going to switch this out for my 8 head. But, um, no, do I really think that Gonzaga is competitive? Yeah, they're competitive, but I think they're that type of school where they just they just like to, you know, they just like to, you know, like abuse teams that are that are that weak, you know, like that are that weak like like throughout their whole conference. And they're not even that good. They're not even that strong in their conference. Like, crap. Try moving them to the freaking ACC. Try moving them try moving them. To our ACC, like, like, let's see how they do against Louisville or you know Clemson or Virginia or Virginia Tech or freaking Boston College. We can go, we can go on for days about those teams. We can go on for days. And what I mean by that, like, we have a lot of teams in the ACC that would like to get a piece of the back. and I'm pretty sure that Zaga knows that. I like them. And you don't think that they were tough to team. They were never tough to begin with. I think that they're soft. I think that they are nowhere near to the level of you know tough opponents that they that compared to BFAs, you know, as the team. And you know, I just don't think that they have done that enough to make that make that team really really good. But I'm saying that because you know, as a group fan, we've we got some really tough work against tough schools this year. Um, which I think we have gotten a win off of Wisconsin, but I might be wrong on that. Because I remember, I think I remember when Wisconsin, when they were saying on the like, sports center that Wisconsin got a win off of us, but, but we were like ranked number three and they were ranked number, number six or seven, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, Wisconsin, they're a very good team, but, you know, I, I personally think that with this Gonzaga team, we don't deserve to get a loss off of them. We deserve to come out blazing hot, and we, and we deserve to, to, to get what we need, get what we want. And heck, if we get a win off of them, good, that's a good thing. But 
We don't care about that. We care about the shit. We care about the international title. Yeah. We care about doing what we gotta do. You know, make that shit better. Yeah. You know, like, I don't really care. Like, you know, like, it doesn't matter if you get a win or not. And to be honest, if we do lose, I will say this. We have, we have worked our butts off this year. But I, I would hate to see us lose against a team that we know that they are weak. They are not. They are not as good as they think they are. And they, they don't really deserve to win. That's how I think Enemy about it. When I, get, when, I, when I go into basketball games, I always say that this team doesn't deserve to win. And we're gonna come out playing the top. We're gonna go 110 miles per hour. And we're here only to make sure that this team is not getting a piece of us. And when they do, then they're gonna go on a run and they're gonna try to take advantage of us. And I don't like that. And this is what I've always thought about, too. And we needed, we needed a change of our mentality. We need to understand that a lot of teams don't like us. A lot of teams don't like us that either. But we gotta understand that coming into this game, we cannot be copied. You have to be a good team. You have to act like brothers, watching out for each other. And, you know, that's, that's something that we gotta highly focus on. And I think we as a new program, we've done so good this season that we've gone up against teams like Louisville. I think we've gone up against Correct me if I'm wrong, but we've gotten the best quality wins. Sure. And our resume has really gotten us to be a, a good, well-deserved number one seed for this tournament. And, and it would suck to see us lose to a crappy team like this out here. I'm not saying that they're crappy, but I mean that crappy that all they care about is shooting the three. Which I don't really like that, because when you rely on the three, that's when you start, you know, getting to you know, copy with them, and then you start missing your shots, and go with them, like, you know, you're gonna get in that, you know, five, ten minutes long, and then that's what's gonna happen. And I think, um, I think for our starters tonight, uh, we have to, we have to really have Jalo go crazy. We need to have him <laughs> freaking cooked out there tonight, because I, I just don't see him, you know, cooking that much if Coach Hayden put him out on the floor. So we need him out there as much as possible. But if they do try to get him in foul trouble, which Gonzaga isn't really known for that, Gonzaga, Gonzaga is more of a just, you know, give, give, give the ball to somebody that's wide open. And they're just really in it for the three. They're not, they're not in it for, they're not really in it to pass it to their own teammate focus. Like, they won't just go one-on-one with -on -one package but they're just going to pass it to, uh, to their teammate and try to, you know, test for a really good shot. But, I just don't think that's, I don't think, I don't think that's, that's, um, that's something like Gonzaga needs to focus on. Gonzaga is not, it's not the type of team that I think that's that powerful enough, because if that man is built on, it's just a three-pointer, and pulling in for it. You know, a quick, like, loader layup, that's what I call them. Because really, like, they're just going for crazy, crazy unbelievable layups that I don't think that they don't deserve to have. Because this one doesn't even make any sense. Like, why are you gonna go in for a layup, layup loader, when you know that you can pass it to a guy or a guy or a guy? You know, why am I giving you advice on it? They don't know what the heck they're doing, but that gives us the advantage to take advantage of what they're, of what they're not doing. And then we take advantage of what we're doing to win the game. So that's how I think about it. I like Duke, and Duke is my team. And I just really hope that we, we come out there and we try. And we just really work from there. We want to we want to work from there as much as we want to as much as we want to be champions. So let's let's do it. Good work. Like, you know, there's so much that there's so much controversial talk about. You know, us going to the national title, why can't we do it now? It's only, like, you know, if we do it now, rather than doing it later, then it's only for the really good to put a bit of on us. And I think that we've done so much in this that we've become such a very good team. But, um, I 
Video coming up here soon, and I will.